You are listening to the Next Play Podcast, the playbook for high performing leaders who want to exceed their full potential. From walking on the Ole Miss football team at 5'7, 150 pounds, and earning a full D1 scholarship, to coaching thousands around the world and working with massive organizations like IBM, I've learned countless lessons that I'll be sharing right here with you. Join me as I interview some of the most successful people so you too can learn how to focus on always moving forward by deciding, planning, and executing on the next play relentlessly. This is Richie Contartesi with the Next Play Prod Podcast, and today we have a very special guest, a little different than typical, but someone who's had an amazing career. Her dad is someone I really respect, and what she's done to get to where she's at today is remarkable. She lives next play. And so I'm really excited to have her on here today. But just a couple things that she's done. She's toured all over the US, including big cities like New York, Chicago, and LA, where she sells out her tickets. She was originally signed to Universal, Universal as a songwriter and has written songs for Noah Cyrus, B. B Miller, and Blue D. Tiger. She also creative directs her own music videos that have gotten over 5 million views and shown at Miami Art Week. And she has a new album coming out on November 11th. She said 1111, important, called Live, Laugh, Love. Someone who's done way more than what I could just say in an opening, <laughs> but um, someone who embodies entrepreneurship, uh, overcoming lots of failures and defeats, and someone who will never give up. Um, so I'm excited to to introduce to you the one and only Sizzy Rocket. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. So first of all, thank you so much for being here. And I just want to jump right into it. Like, let's yeah. start how you got into music and entrepreneurship, because it, music, just like, you know, speaking or anything else is a business much more than music and video and what it is today. So how did you get into it? Oh, man. Okay. I'm I'm going to take you all the way back to the beginning because music has sort of always been a part of my life. Um, when I was a baby, I actually had, um, a really bad stutter and I couldn't speak. And then the story that I get from my parents is that one day I sort of just went over to the piano and started playing a commercial that I heard on TV and started singing the commercial. Um, and they were just shocked, like what's going on? She can't even talk, but she can sing like, this is crazy. And so the piano and voice lessons sort of started from there when I was four, I think. Um, so I've sort of really always just been, uh, around music and playing music. And then when I was seven years old, I fell in love with performing and that's when I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, I joined this like kids performance troupe that would, um, perform a, a pop show in the outlet malls every weekend. Um, so I'd have like a little head mic and be doing like Britney Spears. <laughs> nice. Um, but uh, yeah, I just fell in love with it and, and started my journey. Um, when Lady Gaga came out in 2007, I really had my first idol, my first um, uh, sort of person who, uh, you know, I was like, I want to go to New York and make pop music and sort of like follow that path. So I applied to NYU and got into the Clive Davis um, Institute of Recorded Music. Um, and so throughout high school, I was sort of writing my own music and um, playing local shows with other bands and uh, figuring out who I wanted to be, um, listening to a lot of Gaga. And then when I moved to New York, I started going to school and uh, doing the same thing, just like booking my own shows. And it was really punk rock. Like I'd perform in like the basement of these like East Village bars, like piano. Um, and I started writing my own songs, um, which really just opened up a whole other world for me. Um, I made my first mixtape. It was called 30,000 feet. And it was like these really punk rock sort of like piano, piano punk songs, um, which I posted on media fire. Cause there was no streaming at this point. I think this is, I'm in college. So it's like 2010. Um, yeah. And, and this mixtape somehow and ended up in the hands of 
have um, a universal music a and uh, Jess Rivera, who um, really understood um, my songwriting because uh, I actually consider myself a writer and a poet first. You know, like the lyrics and the melodies are really important to me and it's sort of always been that way. Um, and so she heard the mixtape and I feel like she understood who I wanted to be in. So she signed me to Universal um, as a songwriter. And I started flying back and forth to LA and doing sessions. And like, that, that was really like my start in the industry. Um, uh, I started working with producers and artists and um, I was doing like five to seven sessions a week and I started having songs come out. Um, and uh, so, so when yeah, you're a writer, that was my start. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. So when you're a writer, are you like, are you just coming up with the words or are you actually coming up with the words and the beat and everything that goes around the words? Yeah, so so like most of the hit songs that you hear are sort of like assembled by a team. So the artist will come into the studio, uh, they're working with a producer, and then there's also a songwriter there who, you know, the artist will like tell tell the writer the, the story that they want to say in the song, and the writer will sort of like help that become a song, like make a structure and and write the lyrics and um yeah it's it's really uh so it's the lyrics and the beat and everything that goes with it like do you yeah. like is it like what instruments is because like when, when you were saying piano like hard rock and piano is that like mm -hmm. was that like a newer type of music that you were just thinking of in your head or is that something that was already out there yeah i um i mean i like to write by sort of like mashing up all my favorite songs like I'll be like, oh, I love this Rihanna song and this Gaga song and this like White Stripe song. Let me just like take all the best parts from those songs and make a new song. Um, Damn. Do you, do you come up yeah. with the word, the lyrics first or the beat first? Um, I mean, it can happen every, every which way. Um, sometimes I'll have like a concept or a lyric that I want to turn out into a full song. Or, I mean, the best is when you, like, show up to the studio with nothing. Like, they're just like, I don't know what's going to happen. And then just sort of, like, the producer will start with a little drum beat or, um, I don't know, like, one person just starts and then everyone just kind of, like, follows their lead. And then by the end of the day, you have something amazing. So if I said, hey, I want to come up with, like, my own rap song for next play, like, I have an idea in the story I want to tell – that's something that you'd be able to like if i told you here's the story here's like the words and stuff like that or the ideas you'd be able to put together like a cool beat and words and lyrics and stuff yeah totally really oh yeah we could song. we could do the relentless richie <laughs> theme song let's do yeah. it <laughs> that's so cool no that's super yeah. cool yeah. have you ever thought about doing like i know this is kind of a little off the cuff but have you ever thought about doing that for businesses like marketing and making video because that's that is the future of like yeah. marketing and social media it's it was always i mean your opinion on that i mean it was always kind of message first and then creative later but i think we're coming to a world now where creative and getting people to know you first is more important like what are your i mean yeah have you ever thought about that what are your thoughts on that i mean yeah i've, I've definitely been observing the world and uh and yeah, it's it's cool because creatives are coming into more power, like with these, yeah. you know, these like social media channels and these tools that we now have to like reach people that really like take a lot of creativity to sort of master, like even something as simple as TikTok and like people think it's like, oh, just post videos on there. But it's like, no, you can really um, make it a creative tool to like work to your advantage and um like true artists really think that way so it's a, it's yeah. an exciting time yeah yeah so okay so so and i, we'll I want to touch on that a little bit at the end so yeah, what yeah, yeah, yeah. so you're writing songs and then at some point in time you were like wait why am i not writing my own songs is that like or or yeah what how did you get yeah. into doing other people's songs to then doing your own stuff um well i feel like i always 
like it's always um as Sizzy Rocket like even when I'm working with another artist like I feel like um I can't just like not bring like my perspective and my like musical influence to the table um but the the whole time that I was doing sessions for other artists um for the eight years that I was signed to Universal I was also putting out my own music um I was okay. signed yeah I was signed to a production deal so I was working with producers that were helping me like independently put my mixtapes and my EPs together um so um in 2019 this is a crazy story um uh, I was really active I started becoming really active on Instagram and Twitter um because that's sort of like as an independent artist those are your like bread 100%. and butter um yeah. and and I saw this girl um tweet um I need an opener for my tour um who should who should open for me and we had a lot of mutual fans at the time and so my fans started tagging me in this tweet and I saw it and I was like oh like I want to open for you um and she ended up choosing me to open for her off of Twitter um and oh my so gosh. I, yeah and so I went on that tour in 2018 and she was like really just killing the independent artist game like like moving a lot of merch and booking her own tours which I had never even considered at the time and I was just so inspired by her and sort of um just watched her do this like independent like sold out tour and my brain sort of went like wait I could be doing this at this level and so that's when I actually um like recorded and packaged my, my first like real album as an independent artist what was that called it was called girl g-r-r-r-l um Got it. yeah okay cool so so this is awesome so okay so you found this girl on twitter you said hey wait i can do this too so then where yeah. so did you say how did you start getting on tour though like how do you did you start right from there saying hey i'm gonna go on a tour and i'm gonna start selling tickets well, so what's, I mean, being chosen to go on tour with an artist is so special because they're basically, um, like giving you a platform to right. reach their, their fan base. Um, and our music was just really aligned and our messages, like were just really aligned and it just really worked. And so every city that I went to, I, um just really connected with her fans and that really started like growing my 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 fan base and my ticket base in each city but I knew that I was going to have to do something to connect with them like playing the show is great but after every set I would go to the merch and just like talk to them like they would tell me their stories um and you know I would like sign their whatever and it was just like yeah, I knew I knew I had to do something more to connect with them and and it was just like a really special opportunity that I got. Um and yeah, she inspired me to book my own tour after that. So when I had the girl album and I wanted to go on tour, I was like, "Wait, I can do this myself. Like I don't need a booking agent, you know?" Um right. so I so I just reached out to every venue that I had played on that first tour with her. And I was like, hey, like, I'm doing my own tour this year. Like, I would love to come back. And, um, and yeah, you just got to go out and get it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> how, how would you get, like, the locations? Would you, would, do you, like, book them in advance and you have to just buy them and hope that you sell enough tickets? Or is it, like, how does that work? Like, when you want to set your own up? Yeah. So, um, like, now I'll, there's just so much data available, like, through, streaming platforms like so it's really easy to know like who and what city is listening to my music like it'll have like my top cities and so I'll oh, just that's super smart yeah so like I'll just look at my top cities um and also it's based off of like previous touring history so where I've toured before and and what cities are listening and then we'll just do some research like look at what venues are in that city and then email them and be like hey <laughs> right. I'm Sizzy this is my music like um I have a little EPK so it's like here's like Press a little 
yeah, a little glimpse of like what my show is like in the press that I've gotten. And um, I would love to play a show like on this night. Um, Cause it's also like, you have to route a tour. Like, right. it'll be like, oh, we're starting in New York and we want to go down, you know, to whatever and like across and end up in Dallas. So it'll be like, oh, I want to play New York on like the 11th, 12th or 12th or 13th. And then, yeah go from there <laughs> oh okay so i'm like so i you're... hope i'm making sense no no this is sense. good okay so cool you're, okay you're cool. Like, no because it's 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 the stuff that like people don't hear like it's actually i had to send out emails and so how do you okay so let's say you you, you start book getting these venues yeah um do you have like a marketing team did you build like a, a team do you do the marketing like how do you get people then to to buy tickets i mean yeah so for me, like, it's like you my run ads and stuff or no? Yeah. It's like my content is my marketing, you know? Got it. So you do everything um, organic, no paid ads, nothing like that. Well, I'll, we'll, we'll put some, some, like a little bit of money behind a post, like boost a post or Got it. something like that. But there's really, you know, it's nothing significant. Um, I I more so just really I feel like what was important is when I was first putting music on the internet every single person who like downloaded it or followed me like when I had like 300 Twitter followers or like when I was first starting these accounts like I really made a point to connect with every person that um, yeah followed me or like even took the time to like listen to a song or you know um so I've, how did you, I've had like how did you do that by like if it, like say someone follows you would you like dm them and say thanks for following or something like that yeah yeah i mean it was a lot easier to like keep track of that you know 10 years ago right in the beginning but but i feel like that's really important like if someone comment on your post and is like oh my god i love this like it it actually means a lot to them if you just respond and say like much you know um so so i feel like you know most of my fans have been around for like five six years because they came in at the beginning and that connection was established and so now when i announce a tour it's like i have that base there um and it's just about scaling which is like a whole other thing <laughs> yeah let's talk about that like how do you how do you so how do you scale this what does that look like I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, so that's, that's what you're in the process right now. It's like, so is your, yeah. is your main business, Sizzy, is your main business right now, merch, albums, like selling the music itself, which I assume is pretty hard today because you can get yeah. stuff for free, but okay. So those two things and then tour, or is that, is that the bulk of your business? Yeah. So the touring, touring, pre COVID touring was like my my major my main business and then COVID happened and I sort of had to like really pivot and um like still hitting honestly because touring right now is just a mess I don't know if you've noticed still? how many like yeah canceling and um it's even today yeah. though like I thought that, yeah I thought, is it still still like a lot of getting better um but yeah it's still a mess <laughs> wow. but um but yeah my um my ultimate goal is to drive everybody for the ticket like i want like you come across dizzy rocket you're like whoa what is this you're drawn into the music you're like this is crazy i need to see this live and then you i get you to the ticket you go to the show and then you're just like, I'm a fan for life because because the show was just so energizing, joyful that, you know, it's that's a memory you'll never forget. Um, right. so so yeah, the touring and the shows is business. Um and the merch is also yeah, very important. Mm -hmm. Music streaming doesn't really generate anything significant. <laughs> Yeah, um sure. but okay. but luckily um I actually do own my own music which um you know a lot of artists can't say the same so 
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, because like you already got to give your cut to the platform, then you'd have to give your cut to someone. So it's really, you still got to give your cut to the platform, but you don't have to split it after that. Yeah. And um, yeah, if I don't know if a lot of people outside of music know this, but if you're an artist who's signed to a major label, like Warner Brothers or something like that, they actually own the physical, they own the recording of that song. And so anytime it's like played anywhere in a movie or whatever, like they have admin rights over that recording and they collect on that. Right. Um, and the and the artist is just paid a royalty. Um, but in my case, like I actually am the owner of, of my right. own recordings. Um, so that's really important. <laughs> right, for sure. I can imagine. Yeah. And, and- and because today with social media, you can market yourself. I mean, I, I'm sure yeah. having those someone like that to push your stuff is probably helpful too. But being able yeah. to, to okay, cool. So, so what? So where? Where? How do you? What? What? How are you navigating this as far as like building your business or grow? I know we're this is something you're working on, but what's kind of your yeah. vision? How do you see like your potential to kind of grow um, in in the current environment that we have today? Well, I feel like every artist has unlimited potential because art is so powerful. It taps into that like human emotion that is universal. So a piece of timeless art not only has unlimited potential to reach, you know, everyone, but there's no like timeline on that. Like that could kind of happen at any time, you know? Right. Right. Um, so, so I just try to create, I, I call it creating moments. Like I just made this album. I have a new album it's coming out in November and I'm like, how can we just create like a real impactful moment with this album? Um, and then go from there. Um, so, um, I actually have some ideas that I can't reveal yet, but, sure. um, but uh, there's a performance art piece that I'm going to do to uh, like promote the album. Um, so I think like strong concepts are a way that you can scale. You know, if you can reach a lot of people with a strong concept, then, you know, that's amazing. And then just like consistently touring. Um, like I said, we did this one this summer, which I had to cancel. I'm still like recovering from that that was a hard a hard thing to overcome but um we toured in the summer we're gonna do a tour next spring once the album's out and everyone like has a new body of work to um live with right um, and so like i i say like i just scale by like my art <laughs> yeah I mean, that's what it is. Like, so w- w- when you say strong concept, what do you mean by that? Like you, you need a strong concept. What, what does that mean? Um, like something that makes people go like, whoa. Um, like my, my music video that uh, got 5 million views um, is a conceptual music video that's like really shocking. Um, and I knew had um like virality potential to it um so I think it's also just sort of knowing what's going to make people uh react in a certain way (laughs) I feel like that's the name (laughs) of the game so so what what was your like how did you because I think if we look at attention today that's yeah. it. I mean, I think you've just hit it, which is like, how do you get people to connect and react? And when you made that video, what 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 were some of the the things that the common things that you did in that video that you, in other videos that you've had that got a lot of traction? Have you or have you or are you still trying to figure that out? Like, what are what are the common threads that will allow you to continue to make more? Mm, yeah, that's a good question. Um... <laughs> Because I feel question. like that's that's the game, and in, in any, I mean, in really in any industry, when it comes to marketing, it's how can you get the most attention. I mean, it's how can you get the yeah. most eyeballs. Yeah, I I think I have sort of 
created an expectation of like, oh, what's she going to do next? Like, what's, what's the next one going to be? Um, so yeah, we're actually still, um, like I said, I can't reveal like what the performance art concept is going to be, but I think it's something that has a similar shock factor, um, related to, um, because my market is the LGBTQ plus community. Um, they are my writer guys. And so everything that I do is related to my sexuality and sort of how I navigate the world as a queer person. So I think that's the common thread. Um, and it's been harder with this album because I realized that this album is about hope. <laughs> and like okay. it's really it's really fearlessly like optimistic which is hard to like make see <laughs> right right right, right. You, you know so um so yeah I just uh am still sort of like putting all the pieces together but but it's exciting yeah how did you so that the video that you made um that 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 went viral like how did you come up with yeah. the creative what were you thinking about what were you like you know what I mean what was the process of creating that okay so I had um I'm just walking through the process in my head and trying yeah, to really get fine. this I, I guess no one's asked this <laughs> um, question so, but I think it's so important yeah it's like, how do you no, how do you come really up important. with creative content mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, well, so, so I was putting an album out and I had for every, you have like singles that are leading to the album. So you like choose a song that really like you can highlight with like video content and, and that sort of thing. So I had, um, a sort of realized song that is that on my last album and the lyric and the lyric was really provocative and sounds like really uh, heavy. Like it's a really um, provocative song. And so I knew we could come up provocative for the visual, that combination would be really shocking. Right. Um, and so- What's and the so name of the I video? Came up, well, I don't wanna called, interrupt. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I'm like, is this, is this show like PG-13? Is this, is this I mean, podcast all, like r -rated? No, everyone here is adults. I mean, I didn't, Okay, but, great. Yeah. But every, so, everyone um, here is, is always wanting to find ways to be creative and come up with cool content that's going to go viral and 5 million views is quite a bit. So. Of course. Um, <laughs> so, so, of course. So the song is called Smells Like Sex. Um, it's actually, there's a flip of that Marcy Playground Sex and Candy song in it as well. So I feel like people love when you take something popular that was in pop culture and like flip it. Right, um, right. So Ooh, it has that, true. you know, like that. Yeah, yeah. People love that. Um, and so I, I had the idea to do a sex tape for the music video. Um, and I also had a director that I had been working with consistently through my whole career who I knew that I could trust with this idea and knew would, I knew that he would make it really artful and it would come across the way I wanted it to. So I feel like that's really important as well. Like having other creatives around you who you can like uh really formulate ideas with and uh who can help you like bring your visions to life because yeah it it was like it had to be him directing the video and um yeah we we conceptualized this video we were like okay it's going to be a sex tape video but it's going to be all like really close up so you can't really see what's going on but it's like night vision and everyone knows like the Paris Hilton one like everyone knows like the Kim Kardashian one obviously like there is like already a it's already a hot topic in culture in pop culture um which is where I want my music to live um right. you know like women and sex tapes and you know already such a hot topic so I wanted mine to be like um, a commentary 
on that. Um, and so, yeah, we just, we just executed the shoot actually during quarantine. This is like oh, May, nice. 2020. Um, uh, but the, that was like the perfect condition for us to like execute this video. Um, and then I think combined with the song and that concept, it was just like that sort of like, whoa, what is this right, right, rea right. No, reaction? That's awesome. No, I love that. Okay. So brand, what's your thoughts on brand? Yeah. How much time do you spend on brand? And do you think that's valuable today? Oh yeah. I mean, branding is everything. Um, it I was actually not just be that way. I feel I agree with you hundred percent. I think it brand yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it used to not be that way, but I think it's really important. And I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. I was just talking to my manager about this actually. Um, cause we were like, Oh, like, you know, in pop culture now, like, if you're an artist, like everyone, you're sort of just known for like one thing, you know, like right. you get what you get one thing and like, that's your brand. But I don't know. It's like, you can get creative with that as well. Like, what do I want my one thing to be? Um, mm. And how can I just constantly like evolve? But, but branding is fun. Like it can be fun. For sure. <laughs> I, I agree. That, but you're right. And it's like, how, what direction do you go? Because there's infinite directions. And it's no. like, well, and then someone says, what's the message? That's the best question. <laughs> mm. Like, how do you answer that? What does that look yeah. like? And being able to articulate that. And I, obviously you do that in your music. Yeah. Um, do you find yourself or do you believe like for you moving forward that you're going to do, and I don't know if you do this already. I don't think I've seen it on your social media, but more just like sharing more documentation of like your story and just doing like selfie style talking videos, sharing a, about you and what you're doing, or are you sticking more with the music? Like, where do you feel like the Sizzy Rocket brand is going to go moving forward? What does that, what does that next play look like? Yeah, that's, that's actually a really interesting question because, um, obviously I'm about to put this album out. I think we're like five weeks away. So awesome. Um, so, so like the content is going to start ramping up and I've been thinking about that a lot. Like, how can I, how can I, uh, have more output without sacrificing my authenticity? Um, right. cause I'm not, cause I'm not one to like make selfie videos necessarily. Um, but I think actually I'm about to put out my final like, single before the album this month. And I think I'm going to introduce it with a selfie video um, nice. because <laughs> because I have never like done that and so I think my first selfie video is actually gonna uh garner a little response because it's like oh wait why why is Sizzy wait what is she talking about because what? she's like just <laughs> with the front facing camera like I've never seen her do this um so yeah it's gonna be it's going to be interesting. I'm just, I'm down for the ride of, um, where the content is going to take me, <laughs> but that's the scariest part to me. For sure. I think you you're kill gonna it kill with the it. content and the I, reels. I, I mean, I'm learning, I'm trying to figure it out. You know what I mean? And, yeah. and I think what helps a lot is what all I do is I, I, on my coaching calls with my clients or my teams or their calls, we listen to them and we hear the problems. And then yeah. I just make content based on that. And I think that's, that's what makes mm -hmm. it so much easier. It's re really hard to make content if you're not doing it. And I yeah. see that, yeah. you, I see it so much, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I just like, okay, we, we're talking to clients and they have this problem or this thing going on. Cool. I'm making a reel on that right now. Or yeah. Today we I've already made three because uh one of my one of my sales reps was like, Hey, what should how do we do this? What do we I'm like, real. And so it's yeah. like, but you have but that's like some mindset that you have to you kind of have to like figure out or get into, you know what I mean? And then yeah, the big one is then getting traction on that. So yeah, uh, it's an yeah. interesting game for sure. Yeah. But no, I have a saying, um, art is action. Like making art or like the art like the art isn't the painting it's the act of doing the painting that is the art so it's it really 
is the same thing with like making content like art is action you just have to like do do it right 100 percent. like and maybe this is something so for example like i'll post i posted a reel yesterday and i posted on different platforms right and on youtube i got you know 10 subscribers 2000 views all these likes and then i posted on instagram and i got 20 and then i'll post another video on instagram and it'll get 500 likes yeah. and i'll post it on tiktok and it'll get 10 and i'm like what the hell i don't get it <laughs> i mean i just do, basically i'm doing at this point like i love to just share what i'm learning and then i just post it and if people like it they do if they don't what are your thoughts on like how do you look at content like when it comes to that oh my god i feel like yeah, I feel like the algorithm is like the new religion. Like people just like <laughs> blindly worship it. I'm like, I don't know. I'm, I, yeah, I, I try not to spend. <laughs> <laughs> kind of so like, sure, I get to. <laughs> I try not to spend um, too much time focusing on like views and stuff like that. I, I like these platforms as like my own personal like music of my art like even if it's 20 views like who like if in the future like something happens like, like oh wow like you know like there's a process of it's sort of just like keeping a record of like your journey like you said right. and like really right. documenting and like leaving like these gems for people to go back to because you know like the expectation of going viral ever going viral every time is like too much like that's impossible right. you know to right. keep up with like i'm a human being like i'm an artist like <laughs> you know like not right. everything i right. do is gonna get like millions of views so let me just like let me just like post as much as i can make every post like as meaningful and like as cool as i can make it and then just like move on as quickly as possible right no, I love that. And you make me feel better about what we're doing. <laughs> what I'm doing <laughs> I mean, sure. yeah, but if you're doing it, like, yeah, go off. Yes. Like yeah. we should be posting content with meaning and positivity because, you know, a lot of content out there is, um, yeah, just sort of like garbage. Yeah. And, and they're trying too hard to like trick the algorithm just versus just posting something that they've learned or that they're doing or that's yeah. working or something like that and i feel like you know in the end i feel like if you know you maybe feel this way too but i feel like if i continue to just do that eventually i'm gonna get and hit and even if i get one person that watches it and it changes their day then it, then i feel like we've won so yeah you know what i mean but yeah. okay cool um so how can people find you if they want to listen to your music, learn about you, connect with you, where, where's the best places to find you? Yeah, I'm like, I'm on it all. Um, I am active on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Everything is just Sizzy Rocket, S-I-Z-Z-Y Rocket. Um, yeah, if you just type in Sizzy Rocket on any platform, I'm there. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> um yeah, I'm on Spotify. I'm on Apple. Um, uh, my website. Um, I I love email. Like I I put a lot of time into my email list, and I love to write. So I send out a lot of writing. My website is sizzyrocket.com. You can sign up for that on there. Um, and yeah, thanks for having me, Richie. This was yeah. I never get to talk about this stuff either. So that was really fun. <laughs> cool, <laughs> awesome. You. No, you have a great story, and like. I know we didn't get so much into the trials and all that stuff, but, um, yeah. you know, just to get to where you're at is, you know, there's millions and millions and millions and millions of people and only such a small percentage do it. Yeah. And so, you know, going through the things that you've got to go through to get there, I think are, are really powerful and say a lot about you. So yeah, um, thank definitely. You. Yeah, absolutely. So definitely go to sizzyrocket.com, join her email list, get ready for her album. That's about to come out in four or five weeks. Um, so that you can get it, uh, and we'll make sure to release this episode then. So Sizzy, thank you so much for, cool. for being on the show. Awesome. Thank you for listening to this episode of the next play podcast. If you liked the show, make sure to leave us a review. 
For more resources, visit RelentlessUniversity.com or download the free Relentless University app. And if you're interested in having me speak at your next event, visit RelentlessRitchie.com. Until next time.